In this video we explore the southern coast of Iceland. Known for its black sand beaches, thunderous waterfalls and vast glaciers, it is simply an amazing landscape. We were lucky to do some incredible and unique experiences on our visit. Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. For this one we've come to Iceland and more specifically we're exploring the south coast. We're not here for long, we're only here for two nights uh, so it might be a bit of a whistle stop tour of some of the sites and activities that you can do here. But we've got two pretty big activities planned for this one. The first one being a uh, aeroplane ride over the glacial rivers which is something I've wanted to do for, for quite a few years now. You can get some incredible abstract images um, that just, yeah, that just looks incredible. The second activity we've got planned is snorkeling between the two tectonic plates. And uh, yeah, it gives an opportunity to swim in some of the clearest water in the world. It's gonna be gonna be a bit cold, so I'm not sure how that's that's gonna play out, but I think it's gonna be a really good activity to do nonetheless. So we actually arrived at the airport uh, about midnight and we pretty much just drove through the night to get to where I am now, which is the Ice Lagoon. And yeah, this is a really, really good spot. Very peaceful this morning. There's not much wind about, which is uh, <laughs> seems quite rare for Iceland. Um, but yeah, we're, we're exploring this uh, this this area at the moment and uh, yeah I'm just sort of using the telephoto lens to get some abstract images that um, yeah look look really cool So we've actually spotted uh, a few seals sort of milling around the, the icebergs. Yeah, it's amazing how sort of close they get really. So we've uh, made the short trip from the ice lagoon we're now on Diamond Beach, which is really, really fascinating. Essentially, they're just really small chunks of ice that have dropped off the glacier. It's obviously made its way into the sea and then through the tide, it's gone back on the beach. Having a little bit of difficulty with the tide. It's very far out at the moment. Uh, what I was hoping for is the tide to be a little bit higher so I could get some of the waves crashing into the ice but um, might have to come back uh, a little bit later today uh, to get that. What I'm doing at the moment is is focusing more on a top-down approach and just looking to capture all the different textures and the sh different shapes which uh, yeah I'm not really sure if that it's working or not. So we're just about finished at Diamond Beach. That was really good actually. I was a little bit worried when I first got here because I couldn't see much ice, but as you walk further down the beach, there's, there's a lot more. It's a shame about the tide, it didn't really, didn't really work with what I had planned, but might be one to come back to later today, maybe tomorrow, not sure yet. So yeah, we're done there and we're now gonna head over and hopefully do the flight now. As you can see, we were really lucky with the weather and we had perfect conditions for our flight. Good visibility and no wind. I was also quite relieved as these flights are often rescheduled to fit with the weather and because we were only here for a short amount of time, rescheduling would have been a bit tricky. 
The company we used was called Flight Seeing and they did an amazing job. I did quite a bit of research before booking our flight to make sure it was suitable for photography as there are a few things you need to make sure of. Number one, windows that open so you don't get that glare or reflection. Number two, wings that go above the fuselage so you can easily see below and your view isn't obstructed. And number three, a pilot that is used to flying with photographers and can help you get the right views and angles you need. So as you can see, you get these amazing abstract patterns and shapes on the sandy beaches as the water runs off the glacier and heads towards the sea. You also get these amazing colours which comes from the various minerals and sediments. I didn't really film that much on the flight as I was more concerned with capturing the photos and enjoying the moment. We then headed over a huge glacier and seeing it from this perspective was simply amazing. On the whole it was an incredible experience and probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. Hopefully I get to do this again one day. After the flight we headed to a glacier to see it from the ground perspective. As you can see, we've checked into our hotel for the night and it rounds off quite quite a long day here in Iceland. Um, but yeah, one that we're definitely gonna remember for a long time. After the flight, we headed pretty much to the hotel. We stopped off at a couple of locations along the way, but to be honest, we were both really, really tired and the weather, unfortunately, has, um, has turned on us. So we're just about to get on the road after a good night's sleep. Um, so today we've got about five hours to drive to, uh, to where we're going to do the, the snorkeling. Our first stop was the iconic Reynisvara beach, which is known for its impressive sea stacks, but I really love capturing the interesting rock formations on the cliff. Our next stop was another iconic location, Skagafoss Waterfall. It was such an impressive sight and I couldn't quite believe how powerful it was. We eventually made it to the place where we'd be snorkeling between the two tectonic plates. After quite a lengthy process of putting on an insulated suit, wetsuit, waterproof gloves, hat, socks, we were ready to take to the water. We were told the water temperature was two degrees and because we were so insulated, you can only really appreciate how cold that is from the only exposed areas, which was your face and your hands. And to be honest, it really wasn't as bad as it was hyped up to be. But once we got our first glimpse underwater, we were totally amazed and I couldn't quite believe how clear and blue the water was. It 
was a really amazing experience and I think it exceeded my expectations and I would definitely recommend this. I think we were in the water for about 30 minutes or so, which I would say was a perfect amount of time. After the snorkeling, we had some time left in the afternoon to squeeze one more activity in, and that would be the Sky Lagoon. It's a thermal bath which is seen as a competitor to the infamous Blue Lagoon, which we actually went to on a previous visit to Iceland. We decided to give the Sky Lagoon a go as it looked pretty cool, had good reviews online and was a lot cheaper compared to the Blue Lagoon. This was a really good experience and having been to both lagoons now, in my opinion I much preferred this one. I felt the overall experience was much more relaxing and the atmosphere was a lot better. When we went to the Blue Lagoon it was so busy and chaotic so this was a nice alternative. To end our short trip we went to dinner and had a walk in Reykjavik. It was amazing to see how much we packed into this short trip, albeit on very little sleep. And that's the end of the video, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.